Hey everybody, this is Ray Bango again. I'm not in the picture because uh, there's just not enough room for me, but I have two awesome guests here. These are my Microsoft counterparts. I have on the left-hand side, Jeffrey Van Gogh, and I have Matthew Padwasaki. And uh, these are the, brain ch uh, the, the brains behind uh, a new framework called uh, Reactive JavaScript. And so I asked them to kind of give you guys an overview of what Reactive JavaScript's about and how it's going to impact the JavaScript community. So um, I'll, I'm going to throw it over to Jeffrey since he seems to be the, the spokesman uh, for, the, for the group. So why don't you go ahead and tell us what, a, what Reactive JavaScript's about. Sure, so Reactive Extensions for JavaScript, the, the full title, okay. uh, is about getting uh, complicated events and asynchronous calls uh, in a more easier way to program them. Um, so right now if you do asynchronous calls and events, you kind of have to wrap your program inside out because you have all these continuations. So you have to pass the function for your next call into the as an argument to the function and then continue from there. So if you make a couple calls, like a, a dictionary suggests, you have like three different uh, asynchronous things that you have to deal with. So you have all these separate functions that you have to pass around and just your whole program becomes spaghetti. Yeah, and then yeah. you have to worry about error handling and by the time you're finished, the, the code will literally walk right off the side of the screen no, if okay. you're trying to do everything in, in next nested way. Yeah, and especially the error handling, which yeah. is it's really hard to get right. And cancel checking and everything. Yeah, absolutely. So what we're trying to do with Reactive Extension is to rewrap it in, again inside out so that it looks like your normal uh, control flow. Gotcha. Now is this going to be a, a Microsoft-centric type of technology or is this going to be more browser agnostic and, and anybody can leverage it? So Rx is just a JavaScript library, so it doesn't tie into any Microsoft technology. It runs in any browser, it runs outside the browser. I, yesterday I had a demo at JSConf where I was running Rx inside Node notice that uh, right. an open source project to run JavaScript on the server. Nice. So it runs anywhere where there's a JavaScript engine available. Yep. And we've got uh, any number of bindings available for, for any number of, of JavaScript frameworks as well. So we're not, uh, f we're very framework agnostic as well. So we have a core set uh, of, of operators, aggregates, joins, etc. But also for, uh, for bindings for YUI3, for jQuery, Prototype, ExtJS, Dojo, etc. Uh, so basically, looking for those integration points and saying that we can play with them. Nice. Yeah. Have you been working closely with the JavaScript library developers, or is this something that you guys are kind of on your own and having to, to retrofit in? Well, until now, it was it was mostly just he and I looking through the documentation and uh, and seeing what where we could where we could fit in through any sort of callback or asynchronous mechanism. Uh, for example, in jQuery, uh, they have AJAX methods. Then they have, uh, then they have events. They have live events. Uh, they have uh, hide, show, the fade ins, fade outs, etc. Are all callback scenarios. So, any number of those those scenarios where there, there's an immediate uh, need for a callback, those are those are perfect candidates for for integration. Yeah, so we started out just hacking ourselves. The, the nice thing about JavaScript, you can just prototype anything. So we just added our extensions. And this weekend we're at JSConf, so we're using the time to talk to as many of the, the framework people as we can. What's been the feedback so far on the reactive extensions? Uh, cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, Far out, yeah, it's like very new to, for people. They have to wrap their minds around it. Yeah, yeah. When we talked to uh, to John Russig on the on the bus last night, he he said uh, that it was it was very mind bending what we were trying uh, trying to do here, and that it's probably going to take a little bit for people to get used to instead of a, a callback scenario to uh, instead have uh, think about linear programming style for asynchronous and event based programming mm -hmm. where people are so ingrained to um, uh, to doing the callbacks that is, it just seems natural to them and it doesn't seem natural to us uh, we think we can do a little bit better than that awesome. so what's the expected release um, date because I think you, you guys are what in, in alpha or beta right now uh, we have two releases out right now. We, we don't really work with alpha and beta. We, okay. What we do is we do like two to five weeks updates. Gotcha. Uh, on average, I think, yeah, the longest about five weeks. We have done uh, a bunch of the release for Rx with .NET already. And now uh, in this spring, we're starting with Rx for JavaScript. Right. Um, so we did just did a big release last Thursday. Um, we added a whole bunch more bindings, right. uh, a lot more operators. Um, so we just tried to release it every couple of weeks. Um, we still have to figure out the plan for like making this a real product. Right now, it's pretty much as is. Like, there's community support, of course, but there's no product support or anything. 
Yeah. Right. So we're still trying to figure out what to do there. Uh, but there, of course, it's best to get community feedback. It's like, what what kind of support do you want? Is, is the form good enough? Or do you want something more formal? Um, so we really need community feedback to see what we can do there. Yeah, gotcha. as, as well as uh, any help with the documentation as well. Yeah. So uh, one of the, the things that went over quite well was uh, was Jeffrey's use of, of Marvel diagrams to show how asynchronous programming happens. And people found that very, very useful. and, and they, they almost thought it should be a community standard for how you you diagram your your interactions over time. Gotcha. So I, I I think that would be a great great contribution to the community is just show how it works right. uh, through the use of, of these Marvel diagrams, but just as well providing a lot more documentation more than say my blog his blog. <laughs> yep. So uh, if somebody wanted to get more information on the reactive extensions, where do they go to? So the easiest thing is to just go to your favorite search engine, and of course, I hope it's Bing, but <laughs> you can use any one you want, and just type reactive extensions. Uh, it should be there. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, you can go there. Uh, you can go to the forum, uh, download the zip file, and uh, give, give feedback. I mean, that's the best way for us to, to go forward, is to understand how it's being used, what works, what doesn't. Right. And, uh, We'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much, guys, for taking the time to talk to me. And i um, looking forward to seeing more stuff on the reactive extensions. And I'm definitely going to you know, dig deeper into that myself. Great. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Thank you.